Now I'm going to finish up this clay here today because I'm going to be taking it to this boundary to get it uh, cast into bronze. Um, I uh, was requested by a friend who wanted a copy of it in bronze. They can't afford the full price of a bronze, so they're paying for the casting and the mold. And for me, it's an opportunity to get the thing into clay, in the bronze. And so I don't mind sacrificing one bronze to get it cast into bronze. You know, if I sold it through a gallery, I would not make money off the first sale because it would be involved in ma making the casting and the mold. And uh, the cost at the beginning is immense compared to later on. So I'm going to uh, give the texture of this over here because I like this texture much more than I like this texture. I've also got some deep undercuts to fill in. Uh, those deep undercuts would add to the cost of producing this, uh, this bronze. I took the clay of Unconquered to the uh, foundry last week and I picked it up yesterday um, from the foundry. They gave me a bid on it and man alive. Just to do the first bronze of that piece is going to be incredibly hot, expensive. But that's what makes that bronze, uh, that clay so interesting is the fact the thing that makes it so expensive to produce. So you just sort of have to, you have to sacrifice profit to make something of beauty. And that's what I did. So anyway, I'm going to work on him a little bit today. <coughs> Was going to anchor him down, but I'm going to lay him down so I can see parts that uh, I can't see when it's standing up. You get a package with something in it, uh, with this kind of uh, foam uh, packing, and it's handy for laying a clay down and keeping it from being damaged. Now, as you can see, there are some real deep undercuts under the beard, under the hair, and I need to fill those in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And that's why I turn this uh, clay onto its back so I can see those areas. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth them out and round them so they'll be easy to clean. They won't be seen except if somebody displays the thing laying on its back, which nobody's going to be doing. So it uh, doesn't need to be as detailed as those areas that are above it. Now there are some places like this area right here where the smooth area can be seen. I'm just going to add just a little texture to make it match the beard around it. Not a lot, but just uh, I'm going to use this uh, glyptic wire tool to sort of make rounded indentions. They're going to be, you know, deep, but they'll be rounded at the back end so that uh, the uh, mold material or what we call an investment will be cleaned out easily. It's nice to have extended pieces that stick out because they give a feeling of uh, wind, but you got to be uh, careful with that because you don't want to give too big of a stick out, or else they have to cast it separate. Now, I've got an instructional DVD 
out showing how I made this uh, bust. And uh, I think you'd enjoy seeing it. I never showed the creation of this piece on my YouTube channel. I just gave little snippets of uh, from the video as I made the video, but I didn't show how I did this piece. And so, if you're interested in how I created this uh, Viking, its helmet, and all that stuff, uh, you might want to consider uh, purchasing my uh, instructional DVD on it. And if you look at the link that I put into the description of this video below and go to uh, my blog there's a link there where you can see a review of all my instructional DVDs you might be interested in uh, purchasing it I show how to make the armature and uh, how to start the clay Now, whether you're going to cast in bronze or, or you're going to do this in super sculpty or some other clay that you can put in the oven to heat up and uh, preserve, you can learn the same techniques for using those products, except you have to lose, use a little different uh, different steps to uh, work out the uh, Super Sculpty than what I do here. But this is a good training DVD on how to sculpt a human and uh, make it look like something. And that can transfer into any kind of clay that you want to use. Water clay, And more permanent clays like uh, Super Sculpty and polymers like that. This is a plastiline clay. You can't put it in the oven because it would literally melt. This clay is a little bit different than the clay I sculpted with originally. I think I was doing it with J-Mac, with the uh, clay that I did of this guy. And I'm using NSP Soft from Chavant uh, right now. Che NSP so Chavant by Chavant is really a good clay. I can highly recommend it. I'm always asked what kind of clay I use and if you can fire it and stuff like that. You can't fire this clay. It's an oil-based clay. It's a, uh, at least I think it's oil-based. I, I think it's Vaseline or something like that, but I don't know exactly how they make the clay. The formula for Chavant clay uh, was created and developed by a French scientist back in the 1890s and it's been a highly sought after play by professionals ever since. Um, I met the uh, CEO of uh, Chavant uh, about two summers ago 
and uh, him and his son were uh, in Loveland, Colorado when I was actually starting to work on uh, the Unconquered piece. And uh, really a nice guy. He uh, sent me samples of his clay and I put up a video on uh, going through those samples some time back if you want to look it up in my repertoire of videos. I'm just doing a a slight texturing of the face, cleaning it up a little bit. Take this uh, lighter fluid and I'm going to put it on this brush. This will be the last thing I do today because this will take time for this stuff to evaporate. And I just go over the clay and it cleans it up and smooths it out as well. Just smooths it out a little bit. All right, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see you next time. Whatever that may be. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.